Hey, I'm Josh, this is Lynn, and this is Pastor Chat. So hey, Lynn, uh, a couple of questions from this, uh, this weekend's message. Um, what if you, as a parent, you're really trying to work on giving your whole heart to God. Hmm. How would you say that they would determine what area should they focus on first? Hmm. So <laughs> you're going to hate the answer <laughs> um, because this is, this is the trap we get into, right? This is, this is the thing that keeps us from ever giving our whole heart, heart to God is we go, okay, I'm, I'm not ready to give my whole heart. I'm not ready to live in surrender. So I'll figure out what thing I am ready to give and I'll give him that. And if you noticed in the sermon, when I was doing the sermon, I talked about this giving my heart as being parallel to this idea of lordship, right? If Jesus isn't Lord of all, he's not Lord of all. And that's because this conversation is about a throne. And if I'm giving God pieces of me, I'm the one sitting on the throne. And then I go, okay, God, you can have this piece of me. And then I'll go, oh, okay, God, you can have this piece of me. But as long as I'm sitting on the throne, I'm reserving the right to take them back. Hey, God, you didn't do in my relationships what I hoped you would do. Right. Hey, God, you didn't do in my finances what I wanted you to do. And so now I get to take it back because I'm still on the throne. And this idea of lordship and surrender of my heart means getting off the throne, right? I get off the throne so that he can sit on the throne, right. which means at the end of the day, it, this isn't something we get to piecemeal. This is something where I have to come to a moment of surrender and just say, okay, God, you've got my life in total. And this whole idea of giving you little bits of me mm-hmm. just doesn't work. Right. Right. No, that's great. Yeah. So it, it it's we all, all it's want all. pieces. It's all or nothing is right. really the answer. That's great. Yeah. So, okay, if you're a parent and you are just on fire for God, Mm -hmm. but your kids have been turned off by that, maybe because they want a different lifestyle, whatever the reason, we don't know. We don't know what goes on in our kids' minds, but they've been turned off by that. What advice would you have for the parents in this type of situation? So, you know, the truth is, no matter how well we parent, the best we can do is shove them, give them a push in the right direction, right? So even if you did everything we've talked about the last six weeks, it doesn't guarantee that you have a kid who's gonna love God with all their heart because there's this horrible thing called free will, right? (laughs) So this is gonna happen. And you can go in the Bible, you can go to church, you find great parents, and they've got kids that went the wrong direction. But here would be my my two advices. One is, is that if... If part of their struggle for God is inconsistency in my life, in other words, I'm on fire for God this day, and then this day I'm angry out of my mind and yelling and saying things I shouldn't say, then I think you've got to go back and heal that and address that inconsistency. And so you've got to say to your kids, hey, look, I get it. I get why you're struggling. You're struggling because I tell you I love God on the one side, and then I've got some stuff that I just haven't worked out. I'm not living the way. And I just want to say out loud that my inconsistency doesn't change God's love for you and who God is. So I'm sorry. I want to ask you to forgive me for that, but please don't hold God accountable for my stuff. Right. And, and I'm just, it's so interesting because as, as parents, we think that we've got to be perfect in front of our kids. And so it's so hard to apologize sometimes when we've been wrong. And what we don't realize is, is that our kid knows we screwed up. And when we don't apologize, they take their heart away. Right. And when we apologize, they at least have the opportunity to maybe bring their heart back. Mm-hmm. So that's why that's so critical. But the second piece is you say, hey, I don't know of anything like that. I can't think of anything. My kid is just off on their own. Then I really, really advise begin to ask questions I call them Holy Spirit grenades, right? And, and you, just, you just simply say, hey, um, if, if you living with your girlfriend is so great, how come every time you come over here, you're so miserable? And then they're gonna go, ar, 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 and, you, and just go, no, 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 no. I'm not judging. I'm just asking. I'm just asking, why, why are you so miserable? You know, if, if hey, going out and hanging with your kids and getting, you know, your friends and getting drunk every Friday night is so great, Tell me why you're not happier. No, 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 no. I'm just asking. And what you're doing in that moment, because you're not picking a fight, because you're not proving a point, you're not arguing, that question becomes ammunition for the Holy Spirit. And what you're praying for is, hey, God, when they're alone, when they're by themselves, would you finish the conversation with them? 
and for them to go, man, I wonder, I wonder why I'm so miserable. I wonder why this isn't filling my heart more, right? And you let God do his work, right, right in that moment. Yep. Yeah. Now that's cool because it's amazing how powerful that apology is to your kids. Absolutely. For acknowledging that. Yep. And that also gives the Holy Spirit room to work in those moments. After that whole exchange has happened, the Holy Spirit's gonna do something. Yeah. That's awesome, I love yeah. it. Um, what about, so we're all crazy, right? We all have right. crazy lives. Um, our kids are always busy. We're always busy. Um, and you talked about in your sermon uh, the post-decision review. Yeah. So would you say that's something that should be scheduled, that's something that should be more organic, or you know, maybe it's both and, or how would you determine what that looks like yeah. and how you should set that up? I think an awful lot of that depends on kind of the stage you're at with your kid. Um, of course, when they're young, it's scheduled. Hey, come over here. We're going to talk about what you just did. But you, what you need to know is, is that when it's scheduled, when you put it on the calendar or say, hey, tonight we're talking about that, you've made it a big deal. And you've got to decide, hey, is that really how I want to approach my kid? Do I want to make this a big deal? If the answer is yes, schedule it. Schedule right. it. Gotcha. It's a big deal. But if you want this to be more of a coaching moment, right? You say, I, I, don't, I don't want it to be a big deal. I want this to be us working through this together and me helping them. Then you look for organic. This is, hey, you want to go to the store and help me pick up some groceries real quick? No, no, come, come. And they get in the car and you go, hey, I was just wondering, right? And now it becomes this more organic conversation that you're doing. And it puts you in the role, not necessarily of a disciplinarian, as much as a coach or an advisor, when you do that. So you need to decide, am I trying to make a big deal about it? Schedule it. Am I trying to position myself as a coach and a friend and an advisor? Let it be organic. Right. Yeah, I think the organic's definitely gonna help them let their walls down much yeah. more so in those And instances. you'll find yourself, I think, being more organic, more that the older they get, right? The older right. they get, the more you're gonna just look, you're gonna look for that moment when their heart is soft, mm -hmm. when they're maybe teachable, and you're just gonna, you're gonna step into that organic moment. Right. Okay, yeah. one more real quick. So yeah. what's a mistake that you experienced with Joshua that mm -hmm. you were glad happened earlier rather than later? Yeah, you know, I, honestly, Josh was a pretty amazing kid, but there, there was a moment um, he had gotten his first job and he was hanging out with a friend who also worked at the same place that wasn't necessarily a great influence on him. And uh, one day the his employer had said to him, hey, um, We've got these flyers, you're gonna go out and hang them on everybody's door. And because they really didn't like this supervisor, they just thought he was the jerk of the world, uh, they decided instead to go over to the friend's house, play Xbox for a couple hours, threw the mailers in the trash can and came back and said, hey, we're done on the deal. Well, the supervisor finds out and he got fired in the moment. And I won't mention which pizza delivery place it was, but <coughs> it's a hut, but and it was, it was one of those. Do they and even still exist? Yeah, yeah, they still exist. And, but it, it offered a great opportunity for me to talk to Josh about this idea of saying, Hey, just cause you don't respect the supervisor doesn't mean you don't respect the position. And just because he may be a person that's doing some things or behaving in ways you, you don't affirm, it doesn't give you permission to then misbehave yourself. Right? right? So, you know, it, I just thought, boy, I'm glad he learned this now and not when he was 25 and had some in position and, you know, blew that up and now Family he's got a wife and of, yeah, right. all of that stuff. So, yeah, and again, this is one of the things I think we miss as parents is to say, hey, I want to give my child the chance to fail in my presence mm. because I'm still, I'm still available, right? I still have the opportunity to coach them up. If I make sure, if I keep their world so narrow, if I run ahead of them on every decision, right, if I solve every problem for them, and then they go off to college, and now they're making those decisions without, you realize their failures are failures alone, which, yep. that's just a disastrous thing, right? So I, I just think it's so powerful for parents to say, I'm willingly gonna give some freedom to my child, knowing they're probably gonna drop the ball, knowing that's probably gonna happen, but I want them to do it in my presence so I can show them, how do you clean up a mess? You know, I told Josh, all of his life, I said, look, good men make mistakes. It, 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 it's, not, it's not that good men don't make bad decisions. Here's what good men do. They clean up their mistakes. Yeah. They go back behind, they apologize, they fix it, they pay people back. Good men fix their mistakes. He learned that because I let him make mistakes in my presence and we went and fixed them together. Yeah. Yeah. And 
the difference that makes being there when those happen versus not being oh. there is just a world of difference. Night and day. Night and day. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you for this time. Appreciate yep. it. Good old pastor chat. Good times. There you go.